Timing is a huge uh, debate. It's a thing that people are scared of. Things that blow head gaskets. Uh, it happened to me. <laughs> so, so there's two kinds of timings. People talk about ignition timing. Right. So if you're a spark plug engine and then diesel, we call that your injection timing. Yes. And because the diesel starts burning the moment, well, not instantly, but shortly after the fuel starts injecting in the cylinder is when a diesel starts burning. So there isn't fuel mixed in early. It's also why we can put so much boost in a diesel and not really have detonation problems because the fuel only goes in there when it's supposed to burn. So it's kind of hard to detonate if it's not in there. Yeah. The and wrong time. and uh, lately gassers have copied that technology, the direct injection. So they're putting the fuel in the right time, not the whole entire time the valves open. Yeah. Like I have a, a 2019 Ford EcoBoost and it has direct injection on it and port injection. Go figure that one out. But <laughs> <laughs> nice. They say more is better apparently. <laughs> yeah. All right. So power, how do we make power with timing? First of all, Timing is a lot, you know, it used to be like, oh, you need more timing for fuel mileage. A lot of people use timing for fuel mileage. Why would timing help somebody get more fuel mileage out of their vehicle? So bringing this back to a, a dumb gasser sense, okay. if you have a car and you're trying to set the idle and the idle's a little low, if you raise the ignition timing on a gas engine or some of the carburetor, the timing, the, the timing will raise the RPM that the engine idles at with the same throttle setting. So like even on a, a modern fuel injection, like an LS car, when they are trying to make it hit that target exact 600 RPM, it's varying the timing up or down a few degrees. The, there's like an algorithm in the computer, hmm. and if it goes higher RPM than its target, it will pull a couple degrees of timing. If it goes below, it adds it, and it's constantly messing with the timing. So timing's a very, and, and because it can change the RPM, it's obviously changing the power of the engine with no other changes yeah. because more power is going to make the engine idle faster, less power slower. So I want to like kind of, before we go too much further for the people who may not be like engine people describe when you say pull timing, add timing, what does that mean? I mean, you described like when it, when it fires, but if I'm adding timing, what am I doing? So, so normally the spark plug on a, on a gas engine, it fires before top dead center on a diesel, like a, like a 12 valve Cummins from the factory. They're at about 12 and a half degrees of injection timing. So they start injecting the diesel 12 and a half degrees before the piston is all the way at the top of the cylinder. And 12 and a half degrees refers to crankshaft rotation. That's okay. So we're in, in 12 and a half degrees, that, that piston will be at top dead center from the crankshaft. So 12 and a half degrees before crank is when they start to inject fuel or, or fire the spark plug. Yeah. And so that would be like a factory idle, you know, just a factory setting on a diesel. Now you get in the newer diesels, like a common rail. And uh, so we'd be talking like a 2003 and newer they might idle at three degrees or yeah. zero. Yeah. Why would they do that? What's, what's the difference? It has to do with the ignition delay in, in, in how long it takes the fuel to burn. So if you're on a 12 valve, there's not a lot of, there's more ignition delay, so they need more base timing than, than something new. Why is there more ignition delay on a 12 valve? Because it doesn't have as high of injection pressure, so the fuel droplets have to fully vaporize before they can start burning. The same exact thing happens you get in like a gas engine. You get a high compression modern gas engine. They need less timing at idle. In fact, if they have a lot of timing, it'll stall the uh, starter when you try to start them <laughs> yeah. if the timing is too high. Then again, if you have a low compression engine, man, they might start just fine at 40 degrees of ignition timing, which is wild. That's crazy. Yeah. So it all has to do with how efficiently the engine can burn the fuel on when you need to light it off. In general, you could say just engineering and engine design principles to make the peak power out of a given amount of fuel charge. You want it to burn and make peak cylinder pressure about 15 degrees after top dead center. That's the, the ideal thing. And so the closer you can make that peak pressure event in the cylinder, whether it's idle or full throttle happen at that 15, that's where you get the most. And so in a fuel economy setting, if the timing is a little low where it's making peak cylinder pressure, let's say five degrees after top dead center, there's gains in economy or efficiency if you could make that peak pressure happen a little bit later. Okay. Just the leverage on the crank and everything, for whatever reason, that's like the, the key. And so if it was happening at five before top or five after top dead center, that would basically just mean that you have too much timing and uh, you're going to gain by retarding the timing. Most OEMs and factory diesel applications, they don't have enough timing. Yes. The reason for that is there's some emission stuff. <laughs> yeah. That they're wanting to uh, pass. So 
So a lot of times you'll read like, oh, no one knows more than the factory. If the factory put it at 13 degrees, that's just the perfect fa- thing. Well, it is for what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the factory, I mean, they have constraints of reliability, longevity, yeah. I mean, and then emissions. So, so <clears throat> you talked about a, a retarding, you talked about it just a second ago. What's the difference between advancing and retarding and how does that correlate with where it's at in the engine? So if they retard the timing, that means they, they, they are timing it later or basically the piston is further up and its stroke or closer to top dead center before the diesel fuel comes in or the spark plugs ignited. There in are, there are at applications and things where I've seen timing actually start after top dead center. Like, like you say, the OEMs may be idling at zero or even negative timing. I've seen that on, in some of the tables where you actually uh, inject the fuel after top dead center. And some of that I found is like a warm-up strategy. So they found the most engine wear happens during warm-up on every engine. Like the, like getting it up to temperature quickly is the number one way to reduce wear in your engine. If you delay the timing or retard it, so a lot of that burn is happening late in the cylinder, more of that heat is absorbed into the cylinder and the piston and the ring, and it heats up the engine faster. So some engines have a warm-up strategy from the factory of having... Wait a minute. I feel like you're backwards. The warm-up, to get into the pit, the rings faster, you want more timing because it's longer, <sighs> which is what happens on idle warm-up. <laughs> if you look at the tables, like, you know, like my, my 6 Power Show, when you start up cold, it is so rattly because they do have a warm table and you have more timing to get these diesels to start. They need more timing to start when it's cold, uh, which is kind of not too much because too much makes them really hard to start when they're cold. But if you want to the warm faster, you actually want more timing. So there's more time of that fuel in the cylinder. In the cylinder burning. Yeah, not going out the exhaust. <laughs> so anyway. I was talking about making your exhaust glow like burning your head. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Would, that would work. I've been there too. <laughs> Make boost early because of yeah, it. Yes, and that's something we'll talk about as well. Like, you know, boost building strategies using timing. So now a lot of people are like, well, how much difference can you really make with timing? <laughs> Fair amount. <laughs> well, I mean, every factory traction control strategy on a car I mean, think about it. You go try to do a burnout in a new, I don't care if it's a truck, car, any, you know, diesel truck, gas car. When it flashes the traction control and you can't spin the tires anymore. Now, if it's really bad, they'll shut the throttle blade on a gas, but on a diesel, there's no throttle blade. That's purely the factory tuning, pulling a whole bunch of timing to kill so much power. You can't even do a burnout anymore. Yeah. Or if you're spinning on ice to make it stop spinning on ice. So, so little power, you can't even do a burnout on ice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they also have brake strategies they put in. I mean, there's different levels of that, but the general across the board, every strategy I've seen, they start with timing as their first method or mechanism to control traction if you're spinning on sand or ice or you know wet pavement or whatever. So timing is hugely, hugely important on what an engine produces for power. And this has been known for a, a long time, like... Um even like gasoline stuff from a long time ago, right? Obviously now it's all electronic, but even back in the day, they had like distributors that would have like a mechanical advance or a vacuum advance. So they could uh, increase timing as RPM rose, because I mean, it's been known forever that as your RPMs rise, that delay is a real thing. You need less delay or it has, the delay is the same. So you need to start earlier in the stroke. It kind of reminds me when us two dumb diesel guys are putting a distributor in your boat <laughs> yep, yep. and we're like, we're like, I think you got to rev it up to actually set the peak timing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we were right. You had to rev it up. <laughs> Runs great now. It's right out of the, on a speed. It's great. 